Hi, let's continue our lesson with the um, continuation from the previous one where we said uh, we will uh, go one by one in all these stages. Let's start now with the input uh, stage. The input stage, as you expect, is built usually with a differential input pair. Let's make here the drawing of an NMOS input pair, which is the simplest one to understand. I assume by now you already know what is an uh, NMOS input pair or a PMOS input pair, how is the input pair working. But just as a small reminder, so we have two NMOSes connected together on the source. On the source side we have a biasing current and uh, we connect the inputs, which are the gates, at the input of the pump, so this will be directly at the input of the pump, plus and minus, and the drains will be connected to the next stage. Next stage can be actually part of the input stage or can be directly the intermediate stage. Now, um, the, the fourth terminal of this uh, NMOSes is actually the bulk here is not drawn the, the connection to the bulk, but let's assume for simplicity that is connected to the source. Of course, in some cases you are forced to connect it to ground, sometimes because of the technology, sometimes it's because you want to do it like that for a certain, a certain reason. But uh, now let's consider that it's connected to the source. The, um, the main uh, aspect for us, since we want to have it a uh, rail trail input, is the fact that this NMOS input pair is actually not working when the input common mode is very low. Imagine that you have voltages here around zero volt, but this means that the voltage drop that you that you need on um, the NMOS input pair, which is VGS, and on the biasing current. VD sat for this current mirror. With zero volt on the input, you don't fulfill this requirement, so it means that it will not work. As a consequence, we have a certain range where this NMOS input pair is working. Let's uh, make here a small diagram. So we have a uh, voltage at the input that is working only between. VGS plus VDSAT and close to the supply. If you make here a small diagram, consider now that we have a range between ground and the VDD, the NMOS will work only in this region. And this voltage is actually common mode. Um, let's say common mode for the NMOS and is the minimum and is a VGS of an NMOS plus VDSAT of an NMOS mirror. A similar case is happening with the PMOS input pair. Let's make here quickly a diagram of a uh, PMOS input pair. We have the same thing. We require the input voltage to have a certain range. Can go from zero up to VGS and VDSAT of the PMOS side with the VGS and VDSAT lower than the VDD. So if you come back to this diagram means we start somewhere from here and we can work up to till the ground value. So we have now, let's call this uh, voltage common mode on the P side and this is the maximum because here is the minimum, here is the maximum. Now as you see, if we use these two blocks together, we can cover the entire range, so we can obtain a full rail-to-rail -rail input stage. 
But as you can imagine, the fact that we have two stages is not uh, is not that simple. And the main problem is that we have an overlap region. I mean this region where we have amplification from the NMOS input pair, also from the PMOS input pair. So, if we will uh, make the drawing of uh, GM versus the common mode, let's put it here because uh, there is some space. Let's consider that on the um, x-axis we have the common mode voltage. That can be from 0 to VDD, for example. And on the y-axis we have the GM. For the NMOS, we have nothing initially because the voltage is too low. And then when we reach this uh, common mode voltage, this VCM N min, which is VD sat of the NMOS plus VGS of an NMOS, let's say that is here somewhere, the GM is rising to the nominal value and then stays there almost flat till the VDD. Now, the same thing happens for the PMOS side. But, since everything is flipped, we start from zero with a certain GM. And then, when we reach this value, it will drop to zero. Because simply there is no, not enough voltage, so there will be no current. Now, if we add this together in the next stage, for example, if we consider that this, we send them to the next stage, then, as you can imagine, we have to add these two GMs together. So, let's add them together. Here is the VDD, common mode, and this is the GM total. Now, we have a certain value from the Let's put here some labels, maybe. It's easier like that to identify. This is from the NMOS, and this is from the PMOS. The, um, the total will be equal with the GM of the PMOS mirror. Sorry, PMOS uh, differential input pair. Now, when we reach this range, the GM will increase because we add PMOS plus an NMOS and then we'll drop again to a new value when the NMOS is working and not the PMOS. Now let's analyze a little bit this graph because it's easy to understand now and to visualize what is the problem. The problem is the fact that we have an, an increase in the GM somewhere in the middle range of the common mode. This increase is the sum of the P MOS GM and also of the N MOS GM. Since if we have the, um, the GM of the P MOS input pair equal with the GM of the N MOS input pair means that these two levels will be equal. So this one will be zero. This delta will be zero. This is the ideal case. Of course, on a typical uh, setup, on typical conditions, we should try to achieve that. Meaning we should size the transistors, the NMOS and the PMOS, W and L, in such a way that for the same biasing current we have exactly the same GM, so that this line is flat. But then, still we have the problem in the middle where we have the, um, the two input pairs working together. And this, uh, this is happening for a quite wide range, because as you, as you can imagine, these uh, two voltages, common mode for the P side and N side, this is depending on certain parameters 
specific for that transistor, VGS and VDSAT. And it's not under our control. So actually this range can be quite wide. Can be hundreds of millivolts or even volts, depending on the as big is the, is the supply. Of course, our target should be to make this range very narrow and if it is possible to be zero. Another thing that we have to have in mind is that this amplitude would be nice to have it very small, ideally zero, of course. So let's make here a drawing how should be what, um, what is our ideal, let's say, expected GM versus common mode. GM ideal. We expect this GM to be flat and also to be uniform and completely linear, should not have steps or uh, weird uh, shapes. And for this, we have to minimize somehow this over increase in the GM. If we think a little bit, how big is this over increase? Since we have two GMs that will be equal, because we said that we want to have the NMOS input pair with the same GM as PMOS input pair, it means that this increase is actually double of the value from here. So this is two times more. And this is a big problem for stability. Maybe uh, I should make here a parenthesis. What is the connection between the GM increase versus common mode to the stability? Let's use this piece of paper because we have some space. Uh, if you remember the body plot, on the body plot, we have something like this. We have the gain that is usually flat at low frequency when you reach the dominant pole. Uh, this is the first pole, which is defining actually the bandwidth. When you reach this pole, begins to drop with 20 dB per decade. Minus 20 dB per decade. Till you reach the intersection with the zero, and then we can have other non-dominant poles. For the phase, this is the gain in dB, this is gain in dc, here is zero dB, here is the frequency logarithmic. Right, so we have a classical body plot. For the phase, we have to look just where are the poles. So we have one here and one here. So we start, let's say, from here at 180 degrees. We go back 90 degrees and then we go another 90. Here is the phase. Now, the gain bandwidth is actually the intersection of the gain with the zero axis. And as a formula is actually the bandwidth multiplied with, with the gain. That's why gain bandwidth, gain and bandwidth multiplied. And this is this point. Of course, to have good stability, you need the gain bandwidth frequency to be slightly lower than the non-dominant pole, the first non-dominant pole that you have, so-called second pole, in order to have a phase margin that is less than 45 degrees, because when you reach this point, here you have 45 degrees. Now, as you can imagine, if our GM will increase suddenly two times, it means that this waveform, this shape, will move up with a certain value. Everywhere will move up with the same amount. Right? Which means that 
which means that the, um, the intersection now with the zero axis will happen here at a frequency much higher than the second non-dominant pole which means that our phase will be much less than 45 degrees so we have a high chance to oscillate high chance for instability now you may ask the question but okay we have the bigger gm but why the phase is not moving well the phase is not moving with the gain the phase is just depending on the poles and zeros that you have in your design so it means that while the gain will shift up two times the phase will basically not move maybe there are slight variations because of other parasitics but um, in principle the phase will not move so if you have a certain gm increase which translates into the gain increase at a certain common mode voltages means that you can have high chance to go into a range where you are unstable and, and you have a high chance to oscillate and this is the reason why we want to avoid this kind of over increase in the gm of course it's not the only reason there is another there are other reasons like for example the linearity the offset the noise there are multiple uh, problems with this over increase in GM, but this is the most visible one and the most annoying one. Of course, you can take a lot of safety margins, so you can uh, kill the gain, for example, you can shift everything down a lot, but actually you lose because you over design, first of all, second of all, you don't achieve the maximum gain the maximum performance for your pump. Now, let's uh, see in the next lesson how to solve this problem and how to make this over increase as small as possible.